What's up and welcome back to Ringworm. This beautifully quiet, chilly, somewhat remote piece of property here in nowhere, Michigan. I finally feel like some good progress has been made in my man cave. Now it's almost just uh, finishing up some loose ends. Gotta figure out what to do uh, if I wanna do the half logs the rest of the way up there. Probably will, I think I have enough. All the uh, roof boards are milled up so I can throw those on there. And then I think in the last video, we got this far and I got frozen out. So I just need a couple of uh, little scraps to fill in those holes up there. First order of business on this fine frigid Michigan day is, uh, <laughs> it's like an all winter problem, is the door of the lean-to not opening. And it hasn't snowed in several days. I got it to open like three or four days ago. It's been really cold since then. I've had all the snow pulled away, everything. It was swinging fine. And now I go to open it again and it won't open. And it was seriously cold the last couple nights. And I think what's happening, you know how when water freezes, it expands, it expands like 10% of its volume. I think what's happening is as the ground freezes further and further down, all that water in there is expanding and, and the ground is essentially raising up. I can't think of any other way it could be continuously hard to open like this with no new precipitation or anything. So I'm gonna grab the torch out, burn up the ground right there, see if I can melt some stuff, do some shoveling, and then uh, we'll get back to man caving. Nothing else heats you up doing this. Oh, 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 oh. That's the best it's been since it froze out here. Okay, back to fun stuff. Not that there's anything wrong with giant blow torches and pickaxes. Might as well do the easy side first. I brought along my uh, cedar notepad. You guys gotta get one of these, they're real nice. Expensive, but real nice. 33. Actually, I'll still have to put blocks in above this board. Once I, probably do it once I get the roof on. Huh? It'd actually be easier to do now, I guess. It's mostly scraps. It doesn't sound like very much fun, though. We'll see. 33, 43. Look out here. It's all my throwaway stuff that wasn't good for boards. That'll probably work. usually try to put this side of the board if I have to I didn't have enough good wood there to cut this any wider so it left a little bit of bark on the corner and I usually just put that on the inside of the wall so you'd see it from inside which makes no difference and really if it's just a little bit it doesn't make any difference on the outside either because these are all going to get caulked in might actually be easier if all the edges were like that to have a little v in there to put the caulk but on the outside it'll look just fine Went out this morning and uh, went to the hardware store, so I took all my batteries, charged a couple of my car charger in my car, and uh, warmed all of them up. So hopefully they run for an hour or something.
you can see on the insides here we're uh, cut these short and there was bark on the edges almost all of these in an attempt to get as much uh, lumber as I can out of each board and because I didn't want to waste the boards there are a couple like that on the outside which is just fine it's stuff like that that I think most people when they're building this kind of stuff just can't stand like those imperfections or whatever they are but I've noticed over the years instead of making myself crazy about that stuff that I just do it I get it done with and then I never think about it again I mean I guess some people would stand around and just think oh that's horrible I gotta pull that off I gotta fix that but that doesn't affect me in any way look at this board it's the one that stands out from the entire wall right here because that was the same thing bark was on the outside for whatever reason should have been flipped around the other way but that is not going to affect me and my happiness in any way. I kind of like it. i got to put those in there, but I think I'm going to wait. That will be like the last thing because that's all the smallest scraps. So let's see. I guess I'll dig through my pile and see if I can find some more, some more of these to fill that guy in. At least a little bit. Even if I get a couple more courses and have to do the last little bit with regular boards, I'd be fine. It also wouldn't bother me. I'm listening to uh, Stephen King's On Writing, talking about writing today. It's a good uh, good book, quick one. Uh, yesterday I listened to uh, Gulp. I can't remember who wrote it. Mary? I want to say Mary Roach. I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't know how I found it. It just came up on uh, one of the reading lists for the library app, uh, book app that I use, ebook thing. And it was all about food from the time it goes in you to the time it comes out of you. It was an entire like six or eight hours all about it. And it was hysterical and super fascinating. So I don't know if you guys, if you're readers or you like ebooks or anything, check out uh, Gulp. It was definitely, definitely worth the time. Hopefully I can keep uh, filming today. It's, the GoPro keeps, this is, by the way, I, I don't know if you guys knew this, but I film everything for this channel just on one GoPro. And it's really the only thing I can use because it's rugged and you can have it out in the snow. It's simple for a dummy like me. It's nice to keep it simple, push button. But uh, every time I turn it off now, it like flickers and jumps. I hope it's not not going bad. But it is a little colder than I thought. It's only like 11 or 12 degrees right now. I know that doesn't help. I have to take a, a clip of video, turn it off, stick it on the inside of my jacket. Leave it there for at least two minutes before I pull it out and do another clip. But once it freezes, there's uh, got to wait a long time to warm it back up. In which case, I got to stop talking. Okay, let's see. What do we got here? Some of these look pretty good. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm going to have to peel these, which is a drag when they're frozen. But the good thing is doing it on a cold day like this, it warms you right up. Looks like I should have enough to finish the front of this in the, the scraps, the first and last cuts of the log. I, I keep coming on these things as I'm building this. There's a reason I'll start, say, one wall before another wall, or the roof before that, or whatever, and kind of go back and forth. Like, did the walls before the roof, because the walls, when you put the siding on, it firms up the whole building. I don't want to be on the roof and have the whole thing moving around. And then I do one wall and get so far because I'm not sure if I have enough of a certain kind of lumber to finish it. Like this front wall. I couldn't keep going up because I didn't have any more of these. And then I got to another couple walls, had to mill up more logs, and all of a sudden I have more of these to go up. I started the roof to figure out how much I'd already milled of that aspen up there. See if I had enough to do the whole thing. Anyway, the point is, now I come back to this to finish it up. It's a whole lot easier just to put another one of these on. Use your pencil on the back side, mark the edge of it, cut it off, and then it fits perfectly up there. But because I've already got roofing up there, I actually have to figure the angle on the edge of it. Use a, a tool to do the angle. So every angle is different also because these aren't all exactly the same. They're not all horizontal. They go like this all the way up. So not complaining, just something to point out. If you're ever nutty enough to try to build something like this, you got it. You know what? Never mind. I was going to say you got to plan ahead. Don't plan ahead. It doesn't make any difference. Why does it matter? If it takes me an extra 20 minutes because I got to figure angles on these. Never. Just forget what I said. This was from the uh, last batch of cedar that I milled up for that back wall that I just finished. So this ought to be good enough to uh, get us all the way up that front wall. 
I'm gonna measure these out and just do a couple at a time. So as you guys know, flip them over, snap a line, rip it with the chainsaw, plane it off just a little bit so they fit together. So I'll just do like a couple at a time because I can't really measure exactly where each, how long each piece is gonna need to be because it's in the roof where it narrows down. So I'll get a rough measurement for a couple, rip them off, put them up, then I can measure another one or two and keep doing that. Otherwise, I mean, I could, I could do them all just as they sit. But this one, for instance, might end up being only three feet long instead of cutting and planing the edges and draw knife it and everything. I'll uh, save it and maybe only have to do the middle piece out of it. Funny in the in the warmer days when you peel these logs, the cedar, it looks like this. As soon as you peel it, it's like white, and then that little extra bit of inner bark, uh, within a minute, starts changing color to this real orangey color. And because it's so cold out here and everything's frozen, this is probably five days ago or so. It's just starting to change color. And what I really, I'll I will definitely forget to do it, but it'll be interesting when I start the stove and the logs warm up it'll be interesting to look at the outside and just watch it like just change change right to uh that intense orange color and then brown i assume that'll happen maybe it won't all right one or two more
Couldn't help myself. I finished that last book and uh, one of my favorites of all time came up on the on the library list. Endurance. It has to be the number one. Eh, I don't know. Either the Endurance or Unbroken. Those two are just like at the tip top of what you can imagine any human being being able to endure. If you haven't read either of those, you're in for a treat. Check it out. We're getting somewhere now. I don't know if you've noticed, but as with always, I never pound the nails all the way in because I end up th taking things apart so many times. If you can't fit something in, or a lot of times I'll cut one end of these boards, I'll stick it on there, I'll forget to cut the other end. And luckily I haven't nailed them all the way in so I can just pop the nails back out. But when you're a little bit scatterbrained and constantly listening to books and podcasts, best not to pound them all the way until the end. I think we're at the end of this wall. Do I dare pound them in? What the heck, let's, let's live on the edge. Holy cow, this is looking amazing. I am loving it. I think it looks way cooler on the inside than the outside even. Let's see, what do we got? I think I'll go ahead and put those uh, short pieces in there on the outside. Then probably run out of light and uh, throw the roof on tomorrow. It seems a little bit unbelievable. This place is almost closed in. Like, unless something goes horribly wrong, I think it will be closed in tomorrow. It's not, clearly not airtight. Oh yeah, I still have to put that window in. That shan't be a big deal. Yeah, maybe I'll do that tomorrow too. Tomorrow morning. While it's almost closed in, it is very far from airtight without those uh, battens. And you can see how badly it needs them. Actually, once I get the roof on here, I'll have to figure out where to put that stove. I'm kind of thinking, might as well do this corner back in the corner it's so small that I could probably still do like a workbench over top of it maybe have a piece that could lift out and then the heat could go up through it in the winter in most of the year like nine months out of the year it's not going to get used so at least that way it wouldn't be in the way I don't know I don't know if that'll work or not I was also thinking uh originally thinking this door would swing out the downside of that and it's really not something I'm ever worried about because I'm here all the time and if I do leave I take anything of value with me but if you have a door on the outside especially with the hinges I have and you guys know I'm not going to go buy new hinges I've got <laughs> tons of old rusty door hinges if the hinge is on the inside then you can't just pop the pin out I don't think anybody's ever coming out here and if they did they could look in the windows and see there's nothing of value but I don't know just something to think about. But I could make the door swing in. I just don't like that it uses up floor space, but it'll be such a small amount. It'd be like that, that's nothing. And I could actually use this corner for the stove too. Cause then if you open the door, I don't know, it'll just come to me, it'll come to me. Oh, by the way, check, this is what I left, I uh, went to the hardware store for. I was trying to think of the quick, easiest, and cheapest thing I could use for the floor underneath the stove and then even on the walls. My guess is it's not going to kick out any heat below it or on the sides because it's just like grill burners and it's really thin steel. They were like five bucks a piece, so it seemed like a reasonable way to go. Yeah, actually, if that'll fit behind the door, maybe I will make the door swing in and put the stove behind it. That just, I don't want to eat up a whole bunch of the floor space and wall space and everything in there because it is pretty small and my whole idea of this being kind of a man cave tool room thing is that for most of the year unlike the lean-to which clearly has a dirt floor it was i mean we put that up just to be a temporary thing short-term thing i can't believe two years later it's still there but unlike that i'd like to be able to use this as a, a work area when the weather sucks because like all summer out here you know living out here pretty much year round in the summer you get bad weather you're just kind of stuck in the tent or I mean I've built enough weird stuff now I can kind of you know go down to the gazebo or the deer castle or something and get out of it but I can't do any work there's no place out of the out of the rain to work so 
yeah, I'm hoping to have as much workspace in there as possible. Actually, let's have a look. Let's see what we should do for shelves in here. I know I'm getting way ahead of myself. I should probably finish putting the roof on first, but I'm starting to get excited. So one, I guess the flip down bunk in the back of this, which I don't know if it makes any difference which corner it goes in, probably fold down like that. So with it flipped up, it kills that area to there. That still leaves a lot of shelving up there. I might put some uh, braces across here too, so I could put stuff on top of it. That'd be kind of nice. Yeah, that's a lot of shelves back there. And then that still leaves this whole corner which could be shelving or I wonder if there's even enough room. I do I want to have like a work a couple of workbenches in here with shelving like this is the obvious corner for a workbench and then shelves there. But I also have like to have another small area like small workbench. I guess it won't fit behind the door there that I could sit and use my computer in the summer so I can edit these videos without having to sit in my tent. That's really not the most comfy way to do it. Of course, in the summer, this place is going to be roasting and it's not going to have screens or anything. I don't know. We're just getting too far ahead of ourselves now, aren't we? All right, let's 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 finish cutting those little crappy things out and then, then we'll, we'll think about shelves. Got him up. I think we, since we got a half an hour light left, let's go get that window. Thing's still holding up pretty nicely. We don't have that much snow. I don't think we've had more than a foot on the ground at any one point, but it hasn't bowed any more than the way I built it. Nothing seems to have fallen apart yet. I can hardly even remember sitting in here on the hot days. <laughs> it seems like so long ago. Too. So these are the 40 pound tanks I got for, oh, interestingly, you can see the fill line right to there because there's some ice on that. Huh. I guess I thought when they filled them, yeah, it's filled right there. I guess that's 40 pounds. Doesn't look like 40 pounds, looks like uh, 32 pounds, but what do I know? But I'm just going to tee those together uh, to, to run that little uh, sheet metal stove I got. I'd say the chances are next to zero that this is going to fit as beautifully as the last one did. But with just uh, cedar board ends sticking up in the windowsill and on the edges, I've got a grinder with like a 30 grit disc on it so I can just shape it down. This definitely isn't going to press fit like the last one. I'm not in a hurry to get to the summer, but I'm looking forward in the summer to doing something with the sky deck. I don't know if you could see it through the woods there. That was a crazy one to build. Cutting off trees 15 feet up and getting all that, those huge sticks of lumber up there, like two, two by 16s by 15, 16 feet long up in the air. That was really a trick. And those of you that have been watching along know I built it just to see if I could build it. Like a lot of this stuff. Build it just to see what'll happen. But uh, Tito and I got some ideas of what we might be able to do with that. So come summertime, might be something that might be turned into something real weird. I know you'd be shocked if I build something weird. It's 
that's in the bottom. Yeah, that's what I expected. Ooh, it's ugly over here. That's what cocks for though, right? Oh yeah, really ugly. I think it's just one corner hanging up. Oh yeah, I can see. Looks like a drunk man cut it. <laughs> I must have put this board in backwards. I think I'll just grind that edge off right there and should pop in. Good lord. Java chip Oreos? <laughs> mm. Thank you, thank you. Almost feels like inside here. All right, it's roof time. Oh, I forgot. I have everything already ripped. Oh, baby. Got the first two uh, cedar already cut, so just throw those up there and then see how far the uh, aspen goes. I actually saved, uh, what do I have? Like four, five, six full length cedar boards as well that I didn't have to use on the sides in case the, uh, <laughs> this might end up being a weird roof. Two cedar boards at the bottom that'll you'll see from underneath, like where the eaves would be two cedar boards and then aspen going up. And then if I run out of aspen, I'm gonna go back to cedar, cause why not? My guess is that like the two on the cap will be cedar or something like that, but we'll see. All the hard work's done, let's just throw them up there. The worst part about doing this on this side of the uh, cabin here is to have a continually move a stepladder around in uneven snow and uneven ground. Some of the snow is packed like icy concrete, some of it's loose. There's like stumps and stuff sticking up. If I can make it through this without falling off a ladder, I'll be in good shape. I got uh, pants and long underwear on today with my bibs. I can't hardly move my legs. <laughs> oh my God. The tent and the uh, cabin here look about the same size, don't they? How embarrassing. And it didn't take me three months to get that tent together. I don't know if it's really been three months, but it's kind of starting to feel like it. Almost there. Gonna need a little bit of cedar up here though. I suppose at one of these points I could get on the roof, which I'll have to for any more boards, but 
with as frozen as this stuff is and with rubbery work uh, winter boots on the less walking on the roof the better I probably have to nail some boards on here to stand on getting a little tight and I have to eat a little less beef jerky if I'm gonna keep doing this kind of work We need uh, maybe three or four cedar boards up there. It's crazy in here. Just getting rid of uh, some of the light skylight, it starts feeling like a like a real place. It totally shrunk just putting those five or six boards on. It feels so much smaller in here now. <laughs> Not that that matters. It's still bigger than my tent by at least 11 or 13 percent. All right, let's see what we got here. Oh, yeah. Those are plenty long. Oh, I forgot those are the ones with the uh, woodpecker holes in them. There's a couple that don't have them. This, I think these are a foot longer than I need, so I'll cut that off. But I'm somewhere in there. I don't know where. Huh, somewhere. Actually, when I think about it, if there's a woodpecker hole right there, it's not too big. It won't even really matter. Be kind of cool to have that in the roof of the place in the ceiling that you can look up and see a giant woodpecker hole i mean it's going to be tar papered and shingled over so as long as it's not like a massive hole where stuff's going to sag through there should be fine yeah let's rip some of these up just have to pick a nice even break in the action in between tasks or I can't I can't get myself to stop in the middle of something and eat so before I rip those boards up and I have some well-aged spaghetti doesn't that sound good aged spaghetti uh, at least it's hot and it makes the hunger pang stop got those uh, black bean noodles that I like so much they eat like meat of course the meat in here eats like meat too but the noodles are great. It's hot, and that's good enough for me. Mmm. Not bad. Right in my nail pouch. Just moving one board is a lot of work. Good thing is there's only a 4% chance of snow today, so all the snow in the last uh, hour and a half doesn't count for anything. It's one of those figment snowstorms. Mmm, figs. It's not really a problem except it's making uh, the roof a little slick. Just nail down these four and then I gotta cut one more strip out of something. I think I might have a scrap left just to fill this hole in and then uh, 
I don't know, what's next? The good thing is, as long as there's not heat in there and the weather doesn't get above 32, it's basically dry inside. All the snow's just gonna collect on top of the boards and uh, shouldn't really be an issue. It's a good thing I never want heat, <laughs> you know what I mean? I've uh, become a big fan of these magnetic little nail holder things on the hammers. I still don't know if this is something that's been around for like 30 years and I just didn't know it. But man, they are super handy. Just to be perfectly clear, I am part of the uh, magnetic hammer lobby. So just take that into account. Fancy, right? That one I can reach, but it's just more fun this way. Look at that, it's brilliant. <laughs> Look at this joint. I like the uh the cedar stripes up there. It's kind of dark in here. Kind of homey, nice. Needs about uh, 18 to 35 oil lamps. That'll be great. All right, see if I got one more strip for that. I can tell it's been an unusually warm day. I think uh, it was a high of 24 today, which is probably about right now, because my feet are wet and these boots are waterproof. So draw your own conclusion. Ugh. I think this is the last one full length. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty barky. Pretty barky, but I think we can make that work. Let me think. Uh, yep, we can. Looks uh, like a real old-fashioned board on this side. Uh, unfortunately, the other side doesn't look like it. This was actually a throwaway, like the offcut from one of the logs. A lot of times the first cut, like I like to put the the log like this on the sawhorses if it's got a bend in it. So sawhorse here, sawhorse here, and it bends like that. And that means when you take the first cut off of it, you end up with something skinny, it gets real fat, and then it goes back down. So when you take that thing off, it's not really good for like siding like I did the front of this because it's so fat in the middle. A lot of times I'll take that after I'm done milling the whole log, flip it over and mill it again, and you get like a another short board out of it that's weird like this where it gets fat and thin and you know usually you can get a piece out of the middle or a piece out of the ends that are still good boards like you get a few a few good feet of uh one by in this case but this one is the only one i got left so we're just gonna make a go at it hopefully i think it'll work okay it's all gonna get covered up anyway and again you guys won't tell anyone right i knew i could trust you Yeah, that's not bad. That's the worst of it, which will just put a little divot in it, which is no biggie. Otherwise, that sucker will work. fits. <laughs> of course it fits. I measured it. It's a real thing now. It no longer has a sunroof. Doesn't that look pretty? That's my favorite part, one of my favorite parts. Just makes it look so nice. Looks so good, so good. Uh, we'll run out of time here before the next big storm, so uh, Actually, you know what we should do real quick before it gets dark? See how that stove fits in there. 
Maybe throw those uh, bricks in there too. Man, every time I look at this, I'm just astounded at how small it is. Is this even gonna work? Man, that'll definitely fit there with no problem. It's supposed to be like, I think like three times the BTUs of my uh, body heaters, the little propane ones that are more radiant than anything. Tiny little thing. <laughs> Is that really gonna do anything? I mean, I know I've said this like 11 times, but just in case somebody's coming in in the middle of this whole build project, this whole thing is gonna be used as a workshop. I live in a tent, but when it gets really cold, cause this is way Northern Michigan, if it gets below five degrees or 10 degrees, then I'll probably stay in here, flip down the bunk. I don't know, I might just stay in here for the winter. We'll see how fun it is. Still staying in here in the evening when it's say 10 below zero, I just need this to get it up to what's comfortable, like 20 degrees or something. So I hope it'll do that. My guess is the way this is made, uh, it doesn't need the fire bricks, but let's throw them in here and see. Man, it's so tiny, it would fit great right there. The other option is sticking it in there. Look how dark it is in here now. I mean, I guess the camera kind of accounts for that, but it is dark. I mean, it totally fit in that corner too, or it fit even out of it. I kind of like it tucked away. I think we're going to go with that corner. Jeez, really only need three. Maybe that's all it needs. That is all it needs. Now I got to give it a think for a minute. Do I want it in the corner for how small it is? Maybe it makes more sense to put it like in the middle of the wall over here. Well, I'm not cutting any holes in the, in the roof yet. Before I start doing that, I guess uh, I need the door. I want to get the roof on there. I've got drip edge uh, that I got used that I think is plenty to go all the way around here. So I got to throw the drip edge on there, tar paper and shingle. That's probably like one to two days depending on the uh, weather. Really, it should just be a day. And then I gotta figure out how to build a door for this out of scraps. I do have those, uh, whatever they're, fir or spruce logs that are maybe yet big around, maybe six inches or so, that are really long and straight. And I guess I could mill some two by fours out of that. Anyway, I'm gonna clean up before it uh, starts snowing. I mean, the temperature drops out. So come back next week if you like. Thanks for watching. Here's to getting this place closed in and toasty. It's gonna be nice.